Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first drive video on the brand new Audi SQ8 parked behind me. I've got my good friend Brendan Fairclough here. Do a quick walk around the car on the outside, have a look at what it looks like styling wise. Then we'll meet Brendan, we'll jump in the car and we'll go for a drive. Remember this is just the first drive video so we're not going to go into too much depth of what it's like uh, but just my initial impressions. So as you can see it is really aggressive styling. Uh, I love the looks on this, especially in black, it's very stealth. We've just taken it through some muddy puddles, as you can see. It's currently in the dynamic mode, so it's sitting really low, but obviously when we put it in the off-road mode, it does sit up uh, a good couple of centimeters to give us more clearance and a softer and better, more compliant ride. There's some SQ8 badging there, and obviously you can see there's lots more ventilation going on to cool the beast that's under the bonnet and all of these vents are real, which is nice and refreshing to see. And talking of real things, I'm really glad and happy to announce that the quad pipes at the back of this SQ8, there's actually real exhaust behind them. There is some trickery going on with exhaust sound that we'll talk about once we're on the move in the car, but for a diesel, albeit a V8 diesel, it sounds really good once on the move. But styling wise, I think this looks great. I'm not the biggest fan of sports SUVs. I kind of don't get the point behind them. To me, it's like, why not just have an SQ7? But this being such a big car, it actually loses very little practicality. And I have to say, styling wise, it does look really good. And joining me on this first driving review with the brand new SQ8 is my good friend and talented mountain biker, Brendan Fairclough. Oh, hi Joe. <laughs> All right, mate. How's it going? It's so comfy in there. Yeah, yeah, good. Is it fit enough place to put your bike, do you think? Yeah, it's fine for storing people in the back, yeah, it's good. Perfect. I mean, oh, bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, bikes. Yeah, yeah. Bikes or people and body parts. Seats down. Last week, we just had, had a Q8, not an SQ8, for six days in the Alps. We had three bikes, every sort of imaginable bit of sport equipment, and we just cruised around, and it held its own against an R8. It's in the mountain roads, it's sick. Amazing, so it's not just a good looker. On that note, let's jump inside and uh, take it for a quick drive. Starting off on a semi off-road route. Yes, I know not many people are gonna take these off-road, but um, we'll take it, splash it through some puddles. Do you wanna drive? I'll... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I think I'll drive, mate, yeah. Ah, brilliant, how's it going? Hello, mate. <laughs> right, we'll switch to the GoPros. Right then guys, we are now inside the SQ8. I'm just uh, getting my driving position sorted because Mr. Brendog was in here on the way down. We've had the car for about half an hour, so we're reasonably familiar with it. In fact, Brendan is very familiar with the Q8, as you mentioned briefly outside. Yeah, like the exact inside actually can't tell any differences from the actual normal Q8. From the Q8 you had. Did yours have a carbon trim in it? Ours didn't have a carbon pack but there. But it had Alcantara, Alcantara and Alcantara seats, everywhere. Seats, it's yeah. literally just not that piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think inside, like you say, that they, 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 they share, especially your one was a really pimped up yeah, really four-sprung top of the range Q8, which is probably 85 odd grand anyway. Um, but as we're going off, we're not going proper off-road, we do go through a few puddles, but let's um, let's experiment with the suspension. Um, so yeah, Brendan's actually been showing me Dynamic around the car. Mode. Dynamics normally what we have it. Yeah, we'll oh yeah. Go back and we'll put it in where there is an off there's an off, off road, road all yeah. road efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic and individual. But uh let's get off road. Off road, yeah. So instantly it's showing me that it's it's raising the car. I can actually feel it going up. It goes up like this in stages. Yeah. Uh, like a rocking horse. Uh let's whack it into um, okay, so here we go. I can, yeah, I can feel the car lifting up slowly. Weird, isn't it? Even though it's like little increments, you do feel it, don't you? And instantly I feel like, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm feeling invincible now. Like, can I drive straight over those posts? I wouldn't go for the post, no. Oh, okay. I might get another one after that. All right, so the road's just down there. Should no, we I think just... straight over... Oh, no, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, what? Through these trees? I oh, yeah, it is through there, oh, yeah. Want to go through it... these ones? Go. With a bit of throttle, it'll just, go anywhere. As long as I don't <laughs> knock my uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We were joking before about getting this car stuck between some trees. Um, I don't know how I would explain that to Audi. Really, we'd have to make a very good video around it to make. Or we'd have the... to make no video. Or no video. Stolen. Yeah, exactly. So SQ8, they start at. In fact, I'm just going to stop. We're on private land, so I can stop and pick up my phone. But uh, they start at, uh, I did write this down, 81,750 quid for the 
base model SQ8, and they go up to 104 for this uh, Vorsprung model, except this one has got a couple of extra options on it, which is, what's that, 106 and a half 106 or something? 106 and a half grand, yeah. So that's a lot of money, uh, a lot, a lot of money. And I know a hundred grand for, say, your average Range Rover buyer is about normal, um, but it's it's a lot of cash. But I have to say, if you haven't been in one of these, it feels to me like it's just it feels lovely in here, doesn't it? Like the, the interior, the tech. Um, it's a hundred grand. Yep. But you feel a million dollars. You feel, hey, hey, that's a good one. Yeah. Are we going the right way? Yeah, I'd say in there where it says green. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually want to. <laughs> After your amazing line, I. I, I no, but do you know time. what? Like, if you. if you, And it is, it is comparable to the, the Range Rovers and the, and the, the top of the range um, XC90s and what, isn't it? Yes. Is that what we yeah, no, absolutely, to? yeah. yeah. And I think you do sit in it and it's so quiet in it and the interior is just. There's no compromises at all, is there? There's not. The plastics, the finish, as with all Audi cabins, it's like if you haven't been in a modern Audi cabin, we'll talk about my feelings around touchscreen stuff because I'm not the biggest fan of it. But there's no denying that, especially when it's clean like it is at the moment, it all looks so good. It's such, and when you get in here and it's all t turned off and it's all black, it yeah. just looks. And you can easily just turn that off. You just turn that off like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's not distracting yeah. at all. And we we were in this and an R8 last week, and we were fighting over. You get in this and the. the the heads up display on there, yeah, so simple. Tells you how fast you're going and yep. what the speed limit is and the zone you're at. Yep, yep, everything you need to know. And it's just like perfect there. And at first, like it, I, I, at first, maybe the first minute, I was like, that's a distraction. Yeah. Then after that, it's quite the opposite. It's like really helps you out, I think. Yeah. Well, I always go on about like virtual cockpits are great. They look fancy and all this, but I always say the future's definitely head up display. Yeah. Like it would have to be because it's safe. Uh, it's where you're looking anyway. Um, I just think it's it's great. Um, wow, these are quite big. And bumps. you can get your Instagram up on there. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You can do your emails, yeah. everything. Um, but yeah, 106 you grand. Typing on the screen. Yeah, wouldn't that be good? Uh, but also, I think when you when you sort of um, let's just make it. A I know this is probably not what we're meant to be doing, but we just got to make it a little bit more interesting. I, I know when you compare this to something like. Let's say the uh, the Lamborghini Urus, which I'm not the biggest fan of the name, and I'm not the biggest Lamborghini fan. But although this isn't the biggest incline, I bet you that's cocky and wheel there. And this Grand Clearance, yeah, that's, yeah. that's fair. I mean, coming from someone who drives a Land Rover, you're like, what was that off road? <laughs> but you know, considering we're on full like Absolutely, these are properly yeah. road, road bias slicks, tires, yeah. yeah it, it's effectively a Urus, and the Urus, I think they're about two, they're nearly double the money. So really, you know, it's not. It's not cheap by any means, it's a lot of money, but this is, at the moment, the flagship until the RS Q8 comes out, which is going to be effectively exactly what a Eurus is. It's going to be an RS6 engined um, Q8. I've gone wrong again. I'll blame it on the co-driver. See, when I was sitting there, mate, everything was going, you know. The co-driver was just checking everything out. Swimmingly like, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's so comfortable when I was sort of waiting for my glass of wine to say. <laughs> well, we got the, we got the vineyard, so. Oh, look at this. This is, this is really quite magic. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's really it's it's really nice in here. What have we got powering it? Well, this has got the four liter V8 turbo diesel in it, and 430 brake horsepower ish, give or take. But most importantly, 900 newton meters of torque, and that's a restricted 900 as well. They've had to restrict it because anything more would just tear the gearbox apart really, um, yeah, yeah. And, wow. and everything else it, you know the torque is what destroys cars effectively um, and 900 is is a safe amount so that the car would last but 900 newton meters that's a lot of torque and uh, it, you know it's, it's twice of what a, a normal high powered say petrol car would have um, and torque is what you need to move a big heavy lump like this uh, Q8 along so as we'll find out later when we get on the road, it's it's a really handy figure to have because it definitely propels us well. We're we gonna make it, are we gonna make it? Yes, we are. And half the reason we're gonna make it is because in this four-sprung model, it has got four-wheel steer, which is really, really handy on big, long cars because it's slow maneuvers like that. It basically effectively shortens the wheelbase. So when the wheels, the front wheels are turning right, the rears are turning left, and therefore it's just turning around almost like a shopping trolley. And at higher speeds, both fronts and rears turn at the same in the same direction, uh, so that you don't have that sort of uh, gravitational force, if you like. The whole car moves. Great for parking side. as well. Yeah, great for parking, exactly. Um, 
Really good. Well, this is this is an unusual <laughs> review. It'd be good if we could be skidding around here like a rally stage, but um Okay guys, we are now on the road, uh, just trying to navigate our way back to where we need to be because as with always with these press events, they're great fun, but they're always a little bit up against it time-wise when you're trying to film a video. It's all right if you're doing a written piece because you can go away with, with your memories from the day, but in this scenario, it's this guy, let's go, yeah, let's, let's go. Wow, it's a, it's a pretty heavy steering, right? Yeah, it's just it's on dynamic. Oh, okay. It yeah, just when feels... you put it on dynamic, it goes heavy, and when you put it on comfort, I think it really lights it up. So coming on to slip road here, up to 70 mile an hour, and we're there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very quick, and as you can hear now that we're in dynamic, we've got a bit of sound going on the cabin. We think some of that might be fake. We actually talked about this a bit in uh, a car chat video that I had with Brendan earlier on. If you haven't checked that out, make sure to head over to my other YouTube channel, Achilles Car Chatter, where Brendan and I talk about everything, not just car stuff. But we do, one of our subjects is talking about um, fake car And noises. it's funny because we sort of noticed it because we opened the windows and booted it a bit. Yeah. And we were like, oh, it sounds it's all right. And you close the windows and then it sounds more meaty, doesn't it? It sounds so better like from inside easy, yeah. the car. I mean, listen to that. Uh, and actually, around the rear exhaust box, Brendan was on his hands and knees earlier on, as he tends to do when he's around me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and he... Uh, car yeah, box, he... <laughs> is in the Surrey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not whiskey car park. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's posh, posh, posh dogging in Surrey, isn't it? Um, but yeah, there's something funky going on with the exhaust down there. Uh, by which I mean, looks like there's kind of like some kind of extras bolted on. Which extras bolted on, and when you're in comfort revving it, there's no noise, and when you put it in dynamic, you suddenly get this lovely V8 grumble. But it is a V8, so that's that's kind of my. I don't have too much of a run with it because I know there's a V8 under there, whether it's a diesel or not. It, it's a V8, and that sounds like a lazy V8 to me. Yeah. Um, so I, I like that sound. It makes the car, if that sound wasn't there, this car would be worse in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things that it's a good sound. I mean, um, you're buying into the SQ8. You yeah. Know, so you're buying the sporty one. Yeah, otherwise you might as well just have so the one that you, you had. So if you don't care for that noise, which I'm sure there's plenty of people that are going to buy this car, they're buying an SUV to chuck kids in the back, kids in the back, bikes yep. in the back, blah, blah, blah. Yep. You don't need that noise. But if you... If you want the S, you want a little bit of something different, you want a little bit of sportiness, you want a little bit of noise, you want to put your foot in every now and again and go, oh yeah, that was nice. Yes. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's exactly as you say, It's that's what the S, that's what the difference is and that's why you'd go for an S. Um, the RS is going to be, you know, the next level and that's going to be petrol. Um, and, and that's why I don't have too much of an issue with some of like the new S4 and S6. I know they've all gone to diesels now, um, but they do a very efficient, good job of being long distance, fast GT four doors, if you like. But this V8 version, this V8 lump is, is really, it is a special, it's a special engine. It's, it's very, very powerful. In terms of efficiency, I don't even know what the figures are. Uh, in fact, okay, so it's averaged 25 and a half MPG in the run that we've been using. And you know, that's actually not too bad because we've been booting it around. We haven't yeah, been, we well, haven't I been. I think you can pretty much put that at 30, 30 miles per gallon. Like yes. We, we drove around, I drove around uh, the Alps and it, we were doing it like, between 30 and 35. 30, going, 35. Uh, but I think, that, I don't think we can safely say around 30. 30, and on long runs on an efficient motorway, I reckon yeah. you could probably squeeze out 35 yeah, without yeah. any issues. Um, but again, someone that's spending this kind of money on a car like this is probably not going to be too fussed about MPG, but at the same time, you want to have something that you can jump in and drive you know, to Scotland or the south of France in without stopping at the petrol station 17 times. So um, so yeah, it's a, it's a really impressive car. Now. You, most of you, if you watch my videos, you know my thoughts, my opinions on this touchscreen stuff. You know that I'm not the world's biggest fan on it all. I am an old man <laughs> compared to, I'm sure, a lot of you, and I'm used to analog stuff. I like dials, I like switches. Um, now, Brendan's actually spent a good chunk of time in, in a Q8 recently, and obviously this was effectively your home. You spent massive hours. 3,000 yeah, miles. Yeah, 3,000 miles, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I'm not used to all this still. I'm getting more used to it, and I'm realizing that there's more ways of, like, say, turning the 
uh, climate control up and down it's not just pressing it and there is a button there if you want it to be and you can kind of like slide your fingers across the, but you living with this what how did you get on with it all in the end um i honestly was like you at the beginning um and then just after using it it's really user friendly like i'm I'm dipshit with this sort of stuff. I'm yeah. I've just about got the hang of my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, but it yeah. is, it is like if you have a, if you have a look at it and you look for it more than two seconds, you'll figure it out. Like yeah, it's it's very user friendly. Um, I love doing this. I love the fact that you can turn stuff off if you're driving at night and you don't want any distractions. That's like cool, that. especially just, with a head up display. Exactly. Yeah. You can just focus on that. Yeah. Um, oh, there's there's loads of cool stuff in there, and everything's just right at your fingertips, and it was just right there. We I didn't actually use the sat nav too much. Yep. Um, we did use phones quite a lot, like just Waze we, and things like that. Yeah. We use Waze a lot, just yeah. because of obviously speed cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we use that a lot, but um. Yeah, and and also you know what? Obviously, in all modern cars, with the speakers and everything in there, are amazing. Yes. Yeah, like obviously yeah. the Bang and Olufsen awesome speakers in there. We had some. Yeah, we had some wicked, wicked road trips in this. This yeah. music blaring, flying down the autobahns. Yeah. yeah, it's really. Yeah, that cool. looked. I mean, that trip just looked absolutely. Yeah, yeah big, no, um, it was. Uh, it was rad. But no, I, I do you know what. I grew to really love this thing. Yeah, really. I, well, I can see. I mean, like just saying it now, the seats are so comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 actually, these are sports seats, but they seem to be. I think the ones in the sixes, sevens, and and eights, whether they're Q or A. Uh, the seats, the front seats, the super sport seats are bigger. I might be wrong, but they definitely feel a bit bigger in this car. Yeah. Um, I love the, I love the cabin feeling. I love that I'm kind of encosseted by yeah, everything yeah. here. I feel like I'm in a plane with all these. There's yeah, just yeah. buttons and stuff everywhere, you know, screens and and I really like that. It's a, it's definitely, and going back to what we talked about earlier on in the vineyard, do do I feel like there's a hundred thousand pounds worth of stuff in here? Yes. But you've got to remember, ultimately, this cabin is the same as what you get in a, I don't know, a £60,000 Q8. So yeah. in that sort of car, then it feels really special. Yeah. In this one, you, you kind of see where your money's going. Ah, oh, brilliant. Uh, traffic. Well, it has said traffic. I wonder if we can. There is a junction coming up soon, isn't there? Yeah, Ripley. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll definitely come off there and then go cross country. Um, the only other minor niggle I have is, uh, is the ergonomics of most Audis these days in my in any BM and I'm not just saying this is a BMW fanboy because I love this car but I can't there's nowhere to put my elbows yeah in my BM I can rest my elbows on these and the wheel is like in my hand here yeah it's everything but in this I, I can never in any Audi I find myself either with my arm up here yeah because I can't actually be yeah, yeah do you know what I mean I can do this but that's not particularly it's not, there's something that's, I don't know if it's just because I'm really tall. Maybe if I'm a smaller person, in fact, yeah, I think Sure, that's what you're going to say, mate. Oh, yeah, maybe if I'm a bit shorter. Okay, and once again, that's Audi, yeah, accommodating smaller people as they do with a lot of their sports cars. But um, but otherwise, yeah, very, very comfortable place to be. Oh, great, the rain's coming in. Well, right, fine, and we're, um... we will join you guys when we get to a decent road and the last bit before the hotel, before we sign out. Ciao. Okay guys, as you can see, we didn't really get to find any good roads. Uh, we got stuck in a traffic jam on the A3 and the M25 and now it's pissing and rain and we're back to where we started um, and we're running out of time. So uh, we're gonna do a quick wrap up of this car. Um, I must say, I am very impressed with it. When I initially looked at the specs and the price tag, I was like over a hundred thousand pounds for a Q8, but this is a weapon. It's a very discreet weapon in this in, in the black trip, I was actually saying to Brendan earlier on, how cool would it be for me to turn up to a, a red carpet event with one of my clients in this car? Sure. <laughs> it's proper gangster, isn't it? Um, and I was got, thinking like... of sitting in the back myself, actually. <laughs> yes. Just getting my up. I'm really impressed with this car. It's a first drive, so it's very hard to get more than just initial impressions, but my initial impressions are great. Um, Bren, Tell them the idea what we're doing for the next video. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, very good point. So, well, Brendan and I have been talking lots and lots over, I'd say the past year and a half about uh, putting a good video together. Originally, it was gonna be an RS6 video, which will be in the pipeline. Hopefully next year, we'll get an RS6 off Audi UK um, and like drive it out to a World Cup or something and, and do some storyline behind it. But uh, we're also thinking when the RS Q8 comes out, which is very soon, doing uh, a car, Versus, versus e-bike e -bike yeah. comparison, um, whereby, for instance, we maybe go to um, Bike Park Wales or something along those lines, 
Um, and Brendan obviously gets on his amazing Scott e-bike. Um, for those of you that don't know what they are, they're super high-end mountain bikes, enduro bikes that have got power assistance, basically. They make you feel like Superman. I rode one at his wedding and I was just like, oh my God, I feel like a machine. Wicked, yeah. <laughs> um, and they're great now. The early ones were a bit heavy and clunky and kind of weren't that amazing to ride, but the, the latest ones are amazing. Um, so yeah, it'd be him on that bike versus me in the car and my normal bike. So maybe I would drive the car up to the top as fast as possible while he's riding, so get a nice big head start. Then jump on one of the trails and pot on my way down, by which time he's caught up to the top and um, will hopefully catch me by the bottom in a dramatic finish. I'm up for that. Yeah, I think that'd be really good. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, make sure to give Brendan a follow on Instagram, which is... Brendog1. Brendog1, <laughs> I'll put that below in the description. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Bren, for coming out. Cheers, uh, mate. Good to see you as always. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, oh, mate, no problem. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're just about back now. Have a nice cup of tea. Okay, till the next time, guys. Take it easy, and uh, we'll see you then. Peace.